On the cylinder head, one of the things I'm asked on the lab sheet is, there, are there any sealing washers under the nuts? What did you guys have? Yes. Yes. No. Most no. everybody should. A little copper. Because you got to think about that it, they're trying to prevent the possibility of coolant or uh, combustion gases. If the head gasket were leaked, we don't want anything to be able to get out there. Okay? And the other thing that that uh, sealing washer does is as we tighten this nut down, the sealing washer is able to crush, right? Because it's the soft metal. If we just took this nut and put it right against here, that steel against that aluminum, we could scar the head up a little bit, okay? So uh, do you think that this is something that should probably be replaced since it's a sealing washer? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't get done near enough, okay? <laughs> the cylinder head itself, we'll keep going. I'm asking you if yours uses a gasket or if it's an O-ring style. So we're gonna see either one. Now, you have the KX, the KX one uses a head gasket, right? Mm -hmm. Bring your cylinder head and that gasket over here while I finish this up. And then I asked you how many fasteners secure the head. It's just really getting you to do the work, count them out. There's no uh, reason behind that that makes a big deal. On this little uh, 85 here, one of the things that the students noticed is that the cylinder head will only go on one way. Okay? They, Suzuki's just foolproof this to where you can't accidentally put it on the wrong way. Now, and this one, since it can't be flipped, no big deal, but if, if these were all in equal pattern and you torque this down with the hose inlet back or outlet back here, you're going to have to redo your work because your hose isn't long enough. And even if your hose was long enough, now you're going to be dragging it across the spark plug and the routing's not be correct and it's just, it's just not the right way to do it. So when you take these off, you want to be very intentional of knowing what direction something goes. I'm going to bet you in the Suzuki service manual, there's a chance it might even reference this tab and say to have it pointing forward. Okay. Another thing I want to make a point of that we haven't done yet is on metric motorcycles uh, and, and some others, but in particular we'll just focus on metric. On the side of the cylinder itself, it tells the size of the engine. So it doesn't say CCs, it says CMs. Uh, see them on here it's uh this 84 what do we normally do when we have something round like up. this yeah, we round it up a 125 might say 123 or something so we typically uh just consider it that next whole number so 85 cc um let's see so can i'm going to do a, a demonstration here on this kx so here's this kx uh 251 now we've got a typical head gasket here now what I want you to notice about this is we got a couple of different things going on. This head gasket fits right now the way it's on here, but it's on wrong. Yep. So we've kind of moved them over here. We're, we're going to get a lot of coolant flow over here. So that means this part of the cylinder is going to get cooled pretty good. But back here it's going to be pretty restricted. Kawasaki's very, very intentional how they're doing this. Okay. The other thing is, do you see how the gasket actually says EX? On this one here I'd rather trust the service manual and I'll show you why because see how that pin looks like it locates it? So we go to the service manual and see if this exhaust needs to be facing down, okay? I noticed that when you're looking at it from the front, the exhaust is spelled properly. Oh yeah. Jeez, that's freaking fascinating. <laughs> that's fascinating. What the theory of this is, is that these holes are going to allow a lot more coolant on the hotter side of the cylinder. Now I want you to think about this for a second. If we look at our other ones here, we're just, uh, we've got some larger holes and we don't have it, we have a bridge here that's going to slow this down a little bit on this one, but Kawasaki's really reducing this on the intake. What does that do to the cylinder? It evens the temperature out. So that doesn't allow this side to be colder or this side to be hotter. By having more flow over here and less over here, what they're trying to do is keep an even temperature so it doesn't egg shape. Okay, so does everybody understand what's going on here? These are not the only guys doing this. Uh, I've seen another thing that I've on Hondas, when you have the gasket on wrong, and it was even like a flip like, like this, and it was flipped, one of these studs actually needed a larger hole, and so when you flipped it, it, it crushed the gasket, and immediately upon starting the bike, it was puking cooling out the head. A lot of work. On that particular motorcycle that I'm talking about, you can't take the head off in the frame. you got to pull the motor. CR500, they had to take the motor all the way back out. Bad day? Yeah. you got to pull the exhaust. you got to pull the carb. you got to pull the swinger and pivot. you got to pull the chain. you got a lot of work because of this, guys. 
Okay, so what your guys' uh, clue here today is, is that it matters, right? Yes. Okay, let's keep moving here. What care must be used when using an open end wrench on cylinder base nuts? So give me your 12 millimeter wrench and a nut. What happens here is a lot of times this will cock, and on this, this open end, do you see how the wrench is actually designed to be fatter back here? Mm -hmm. And so since, this, since there's no room, what the technicians typically do, get in here so you can see this, is to get them a little more clearance, they back it off so that they're on a thinner part of the wrench, and then what happens is they round the nut off. Okay, so here's how we want to really remove this wrench. And when we lose clearance, we go like this to gain a little, and then we slip off and we round the nut. So do you think it's important for you guys to be writing these on the parts order form right away? Yes. Yeah. Good stuff, right? So ideally, we want to use a closed end because the closed end of the wrench is the same size all the way around, yeah. right? So I don't know if you guys remember this, but my favorite tool for taking any of these off on a two-stroke is I grab that specialty tool for torquing, and this is what I use for removal. I can get anywhere in here, my two common sizes of a 12 or 14, and I use this. The, uh, at, down at my old shop, we actually had another one of these. That there was an because this is cheap. What did we say this was like 10 15 bucks? Yeah. We uh we took one of these, uh, a second one, and we actually ground it down even further just for uh, clearance on one particular motor, and then we just left it and hung it on some pegboard and used it that way too. Okay, um, the idea is if it broke, big deal, we just buy another one. Make sense? Do any of the nuts not come off without lifting the cylinder first? Did anybody have any problem on yours? When, when you were trying to, when you were trying to take this cylinder off, did anybody have it to where uh, you you uh, you couldn't get the nut off? Like what happens is on a fair amount of two, two strokes. Do you see how there's like a big relief in here? Mm -hmm. Can you guys see that? Yeah. It's cut out. That's so we can take and raise this up. And there's supposed to be enough room in here so that this nut can be unthreaded all the way off and then, and then uh, have it completely off. Well, some engines don't have enough room. That stud sticks too far up in here. So what you have to do is you have to loosen the nut. And it's, guys, it's always this inside one. It's almost always this inside. Every one I can think of, it's this inside cavity. So what you have to do is you have to loosen the nut and you're going to put it as far up as you can. And then you have to lift the cylinder a little bit to gain the extra room. Are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. Everybody clear? And then you just keep unthreading it a little bit more, unthreading it a little bit more. And then when this stud is high enough and it's only, you know, instead of it being, and so when you start off the studs like here, so you don't have any room to get that nut off, okay? As I keep lifting the cylinder, pretty soon I'm going to get to a point where I have enough room to take the nut <coughs> off and then I can pull the cylinder all the way off the engine. Why am I making a deal about that? Because, you're because you have, have to, to think about first, installation. Right. So when you go to install it, you're going to have to compress this ring, and you're going to have to slide this down. You're going to have to start that nut, get a few threads on it, then lower it, a few more threads. You're going to have to work those two together. If you do this, if you get this all the way down, installed, and you put all your nuts on, now you go to put this one on, what do you have to do? Pull the cylinder back off and start over, or at least raise it up. You won't have to pull it off, but you're going to have to raise it, um, raise it back up. We're going to talk about a ring a little bit. On the two-stroke piston, we have locating dowels, okay? So most all of these are going to install really super easy. So if you look here at the ring, I'm going to have to put it around this pin to where I don't want the ring to rotate. That's the difference of a two-stroke for us. Why do, we, why do you think we don't want the ring to rotate? Because it'll get caught on the... Blow by on the ports. The ports and matters where it is. The ports and off ports. Right, so we can't have that rotating around and we have to go ahead and locate them. See how easy and fast that was? Yep. A lot easier than our four strokes, right? Yeah. So now that we're back in here, I can show this. This is what I'm talking about. If I was not able to remove that nut, I would lift it up, give it another turn, lift it up, give it another turn, then I'd have the nut off and then go ahead and pull it apart, okay? And I'd make sure that I'm not going to... Uh, um, let the rod bang around on the engine case. Really simple. So we'll get more into our rings. We'll pull some of the stuff up over an Elmo and show how the rings have a little cut in them to fit around that retaining pin. Here's a good tip for you. Other than 
brand new Articats, let's say. Do you remember how those two-stroke Stoneville engines, I said the exhaust and intake are on the same side of the motor? Here's a little tip for you. All, every single two-stroke in the world that I know of has the ring locating pin on the intake side. So if you ever have a piss in your hand, you're trying to figure out which is the intake and which is the exhaust, the ring pin side is on the intake. Any idea why? Anywhere that a pin is on a piston, if you look inside the cylinder, it's going to be solid metal. So if I look inside this cylinder, see how I have solid metal right there? Yeah, and then the other one. No. The pin is also somewhere where we have solid metal on the cylinder the whole way. That exhaust port's a big hole. What would happen is that exhaust temperature's so hot, people do this all the time. You're going to rebuild <coughs> motors where they put the piston on backwards. And what happens is, number one, since I don't have solid metal, the ring is allowed to come open, go into the exhaust port, and break it off. If that doesn't happen, the next thing that happens, that aluminum gets so hot that the steel pin falls out. And now the, the ring is allowed to rotate around. Aluminum uh, uh, has a lower melting point than steel, right? Mm -hmm. So say that back to me. The pin is always on the... Okay, for the purposes of the cylinder is... Completely solid. Completely solid and runs cooler so that it doesn't get so hot that it falls out. Really good tip because what's neat about that is that's every single two-stroke in the world. That is going to be on that side. Now, you guys on your bigger bikes are going to see two locating pins, one for each ring, and they're typically on the, the sides of the skirt here, not dead in the middle like this one is. Okay? The other thing is uh, this, ring, this piston uh, ring that I just took off, it is directional to where it'll have a, a number or a letter. I can't find one on here with a, uh, without a magnifying glass, but there is one way I could tell which way it goes. Do you see how dark it is here? Yeah. And when I flip it, it's pretty clean? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the combustion side. Make sense? So you had the combustion gases going this way. I'm going to put my glasses back on to get this back on, okay guys? Take a look here. This also, we're not going to use tools. Like our ring expander, we're typically just going to walk these in place. They're really, really easy to get uh, to get on here. I would line that up and I would go ahead and install it. Okay, uh, now we're at a point where we said we could remove any right side case fasteners. And I said, what was a... Um, this is a good time to double check all the case bolts removed, okay? Because you're going to remove the right side ones. What tip was given to verify this? So how do you know that all the bolts are removed? Draw the line. Trace the seam. Draw the imaginary line all the way around the engine case to uh, verify that that's done.